central Wales, the heather-covered moors of Radnorshire, a few half-wild sheep and plenty of wild bird and animal life, here's a happy hunting ground for bird lovers. So one warm May morning, we climbed as far as we could on a motorcycle. But when that was no longer possible, we had to take to our feet and wade through the heather. A shooting butt gave us a place from which, through field glasses, we could see the landscape. Yes, a pair of merlins all right, and their movements suggestive of a near at hand nest. But to find a nest in this heather was like looking for a needle in a bundle of hay. Luckily, some pieces of down gave the nest away. And here, practically on bare ground, lay four eggs. We set to work at once to build a hide in which the cameraman and his camera could be concealed. First wood covered with canvas, which, by the way, we had to tie down pretty well, for the wind can blow up here even in summer. Then to make the whole thing match its surroundings, plenty of heather. From the front we managed to get quite a good view of the nest. The cameraman then moved in to what was to be his home during the daylight hours of the next month or so. taking refreshment with him, of course. But not quite all. Early in June, Four weeks after they were laid, the first of the eggs hatched out. I'm afraid a weasel got the fourth. From now on, both parents were kept busy feeding the babies. The mother here has in her beak a small bird. It took her some time to get used to the sound of the camera, and at present, she's full of suspicion. So that no stray feathers shall betray the nest, all the prey is plucked at a special plucking ground several miles away. Indigestible pieces are eaten by the parent. The mother is now disposing of a leg. She still has her doubts about the camera. And is quite prepared to defend her children. Eating steadily, they grow until at four days old, they are sitting up and taking notice, and still clamoring for food. Notice that the young birds of prey are fed in turn, and not one after another, and it is now the turn of the middle one. A far off one is particularly noisy. And he gets a bit just to keep him quiet.
Now they all settle down for a little nap before the next meal. At seven days old, they have grey down and have learned not to push and squeal for food quite so much. The one on the left has learned to flap his wings. This grey covering turns the spotted down when they are about three weeks old. At this age, they are friendly, but quite prepared to show fight. At a month old, they are fully fledged. Two are hiding from the June sunshine under the heather, but one of the fidgets and longs to leave the nest. he has reached the top. He doesn't know where to go. The two at home much resent a visit, and all three are soon to be found taking the air together. Notice the middle one panting with the heat. They assume a watchful look as soon as they see me coming. But they're not too grown up to resent sitting on my arm again. This one was chosen to be our pet, and he now lives in the meadow, fasten on a long cord to an old tree stump. He's very friendly. And he'll come for tidbits when he's called. rather shy, and so turns his back when he really gets down to it. Here's another call, and he is so gentle that he'll take a piece of rabbit from his mistress's lips. In olden days, when people went hawking, the Merlin was the lady's hawk because he's so gentle. You can see how he is fastened. Among all the comforts of his home, what the Merlin enjoys as much as anything is his bath. On the moors, of course, he never met such a thing, but instinct tells him what cold water is for.